And number one, he says, you know why? Two reasons. Selfishness and pride. Number one, you want to keep deceiving yourself and you're going to heaven and you're living like hell. And number two, you don't want anyone around you to know that you've been in sin. So you keep these false doctrines. Oh, well, I said a prayer 10 years ago. Oh, well, I'm a good person. Oh, well, I'm a pastor. I'm a deacon. I'm an elder. I'm a citizen of Beaumont. I didn't kill anyone. I'm not doing this. I'm okay. But inside your conscience, you don't have peace. That's why you can't just stay in prayer. That's why you're not satisfied with Jesus. That's why you always have to get a new car, some new suits, some new clothes, a, a new gadget. You, 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 you're empty. Because sin has created a space and a division between you and the Holy Spirit. Because you're not walking in truth. The Spirit of God is trying to uncover these things tonight to save your soul. See, the Bible says, He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. The end of living a life of true holiness. Put on the new man, the new life. All right, and that's created in righteousness. God created us in Genesis 1, 26 to 28, in his image after his own likeness. And 1 Corinthians 1, 30 declares, Jesus Christ has made unto us wisdom, sanctification, redemption, and righteousness. 2 yeah. Corinthians 5, 21 says, we are made the righteousness of God in Christ. Christ is righteous. We're in his image and likeness. We're supposed to be righteous too. Doing what's right. In the Greek it means doing what is equitable in character and act. Acting as Jesus would act. Speaking what Jesus would speak. All the time. There can be no division. No distinction. When the world sees us, they should be seeing Jesus. But are they seeing something else? Right. If so, that something else will have to be destroyed in the fires of hell. Is the world seeing something different but than Jesus? Are they seeing something outside of true holiness? Are they seeing false ways? Are they hearing a profession of faith, but a life of doubt and sin? True holiness is what God requires and what the world needs to see. It's created in righteousness. Letter A and letter B. The new man is created in true holiness, as we're discussing tonight. Lastly, Number five, turn to Romans six for the close of this. True and false holiness. To sum it up, as we get ready to close, we see that holiness would just be a profession of faith, which is a hypocritical profession of faith, because the works deny Jesus. But true holiness would be not only a profession of faith, but a life of love and obedience to Jesus by the Bible all the time. Romans 6, verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For or because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We see in the scripture, God sets up a dichotomy there's up two ends of the spectrum. On one side, there's sin and death. On the other side, there's the gift of God through Jesus Christ, and there's eternal life. But the Bible says now, being made free from sin, we see sin and death on the side. Now being made free from sin, of course, through Christ, death, burial, resurrection, believing and obeying, repenting, believing and obeying. You have your you become servants to God, number one. Because we don't serve God through sin. Sin is not obedience to God. We all do that. So you leave sin, you start serving God. Then, when you're free from sin in Christ, you have your fruit. What's fruit out of your life is holiness. True holiness. Obeying Jesus. Living like Jesus. Speaking like Jesus. You are representing Jesus in the basket of Christ. He's in you living through you. Your fruits are not holiness. And the end of that is everlasting life. Because you're now outside of away from the sin that leads to death. It says, for because of this, these two polar opposites, these two sides, the wage of sin back over here is death. That comes when one's not free from sin, when one is not living in true holiness. But on the other side, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. But one must be in Jesus to have eternal life. First John 3 6 says, He that abides, talk to me to 1 John 3 6 briefly. 
as we bring true holiness, true and false holiness to a close. Because this is the Bible revival, we'll bring the Bible revival to a close. And we're going to bring it to a close with this, true and false holiness. And in this scripture we'll see true and false conversion, true and false Christianity, true and false children of God, true and false everything. First John 3, verse 6, through verse 10. The fifth step is be made free from sin. Verse 6 says, Whosoever abideth in him, that's Christ, sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. I must say, verse 8, the word he that committeth sin is of the devil. Committeth in the Greek is poio. He said, do or make one. I'll give it another little analogy before we finish the last two verses. How many crimes do you have to commit against the legal system to be a criminal? One. We know the legal system which exists is based on God's Mosaic law, Exodus 20, Exodus 34, Deuteronomy 5. Well, in that case, how many sins do you have to commit to be a spiritual criminal? Answer would be one. We saw you can't be in sin and dead and alive in Christ at the same time. So if you're in sin, it's just like when you repent, you leave sin and cleave to Christ, right? And you're saved. You divorce the devil spiritually, you get married to Christ by faith, you're saved. Now you're free from the sin, you're living in love and obedience to God, to Christ, and there's a relationship. But then when you choose to divorce Christ, turn back to him, marry the devil again, you're right back where you were, right back where you started. A child of the devil had it for him. See, the church has taught, once you repent, obey the Christ, no matter what you do, you're saved. But is the Bible saying that in these verses that we're looking at tonight? You're right, sister. The Bible's not saying that. It's not. That's why Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Matthew 24, 37. That's why it says in Matthew 7, 21, before we finish this verse, that anyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter, but only those who do the will. You see, the message of God's word, the message of true holiness, is a sobering message. The music to it is more like a funeral dirge than a song of praise, because you have to die first before this resurrection. And most of the church say they have resurrected the Christ like the Christ has never really died. Sin is still alive, the corpse is still alive, and it's stinking as Lazarus. It's called a stink. John. Christ is trying to kill that corpse tonight. Hang it to his nail to his cross. Verse 9, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For a seed remain in the enemy, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. And you still have free will to sin, but saying to still be born of God and still follow the Lord, you can't be in sin. Why are you following Christ? You told him to left, leave him at that point. You need to get rid of him and get back in him and following him. It's a message of true holiness. Look at verse 10. We bring it to a close. In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. So we see the children of God, verse 9, those who are not committing sin. Verse 8, the children of the devil, those who are sin. Whosoever doeth not, who do not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loveth not his brother. True holiness, we see, is loving the Father through Jesus Christ and not sinning this. And false holiness is sinning and saying you're a Christian. True holiness, loving Christ and obeying Him, will cause you to have eternal life and to live in a way that glorifies the Father and His Son. False holiness is deception. It glorifies Satan and yourself. And it will cause you to be cast in like a fire on the day of judgment.